or a message on Facebook. And you have my personal number and you can't call. But you have time to text. You have time to inbox and things like that. So I called a friend up and I said, let me ask you a question. He said, what's up? I said, if you haven't heard from somebody, I say in several months and y'all working together, y'all supposed to be building a business relationship. Is it feasible to take their advice even though you don't hear from them on a regular basis? They said no. So the moral of the story is a business relationship can't thrive without uh, communication, listening, things like that, and finding out what their interests are before yours. And people get this mixed up oftentimes because they're so used to putting others before themselves and they don't create a balance for that. And so they use that and go all the way to the left with it versus, okay, I'm going to see a benefit for both of us, but not just me, but the other person. I'm very considerate. And sometimes my heart gets so big, my head starts shrinking. And that's what I wisdom comes in and comes into play and it's very important and I don't think a business can thrive without a relationship for too long for one you're not going to be in business for long with that person for two they're going to venture off and find somebody else that they can connect with even more so we need to watch that when we're communicating with people especially when you haven't heard from someone so they're really still getting to know you on top of that I don't think it's right to do that Um, Does relationships create loyalty? Yes, I believe that the more you get to know one another, the more you can see where their loyalty lies, either for themselves or for the both of you in that relationship. Can relationships create a top-notch team? Yes, they can, but all teams have to be on one accord. Everybody's on a separate agenda. And I noticed this with my teammates as well. They have their agendas. They have their life cool, calm, collected. But can we take, and I ask somebody I work with this, can we take at least two, three times out of a week, if not once a week, to kind of connect, find out how each other are doing, what activities we're involved in, make it a friendship. Because then they're more comfortable to come at you about difficult situations than a person that they barely know. So that's what I want to deal with. And before we take a break, I'm going to write these questions down in the chat room, which I'm live in, of course. And you leave in the comments what you think um, in terms of these questions. Can a business thrive without relationships? Does relationships create loyalty due to your experience? And can relationships create a top-notch team? Okay. Now, I also want to mention reunion season one will start tomorrow, March 1st. Um, And season two starts March 2nd. And we'll be starting to top it all off with the Narcissism series. I did Narcissism in Season 4 last year. Um, It was very successful. However, due to storage and all that blah, blah, blah stuff that happened, since I was only using my phone at the time, I had to erase it. It didn't get a lot of hits that I thought it would because a lot of people don't know about narcissism and they're not familiar with it and they... They may be a narcissist and not even know it. So it's kind of hard to detect. But one of the things I can say about narcissism is that we can look at traits, personalities, and different things, and we have to do a lot of research. But the first step is to get diagnosed because it's a personality disorder. But the thing that helped me with that before I looked into narcissism was the book called Personality Plus. And I must say this is the book for the month. So, you know... I had started a book club and starting to re-engage in that because I'm starting to see that some of the stuff that I read in that book is fairly true. If you don't know about the four temperaments, you're losing in relationships already. And it does, it's very helpful in the business world, entrepreneurship world. So we will be dealing with that starting in March. And then I'll keep you posted on what other episodes and what other series and different things like that. And so just in case you know, Boss Ladies podcast is just for life, love, and leadership. Um, entrepreneurship and everything. And then the Dadiski podcast is for artists and music and different things like that and other things that people are creative. So it's more about the music, creativity, and the new things that's going on in the underground world. So that's those two. So I'm going to set up some days to let you know what podcast I'll be on, even though I can still tag you and you can still connect. But I want everybody to know where they are as far as the podcast and how the topics are flowing. So That also, too, will be coming up in the future announcements. So, on that note, I'll be right back and we'll get into our EDU. And um, we'll be taking another break. 
for music and then quote for the day. And also, too, I'll be talking to you about Teflon Tony um, on his album on Apple Music. I'll be announcing that at the end. So stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. Be right back in a minute. One. <laughs> Miss Fabulous Off the Love Chronicles mixtape called Enough. You can check that out on www.reverbnation.com slash N-U-C-K-D-D-S-K-I. So on that note, let's get some EDU in our lives. Why Relationships Matter by Kimberly Long. No man is an island, and no business can succeed without 
fostering a myriad of healthy relationships. Innovative products, an advertising budget of mammoth proportions, and competitive pricing are all fine and dandy. But the secret to a thriving business is people, your employees, your suppliers, your contacts, and most of all, your customers. Here are just a few of the many ways that relationships matter in the business realm. 1. Relationships create loyalty. By developing a strong relationship with your clientele, your business transforms from being just another company into a brand they know and trust. This is important for a number of reasons. When it comes to making an online purchase, many customers are leery of dealing with a business they do not know nor trust they will be much more willing to place an order with the company that they have developed a relationship with. Make sure that you are that company. Plus, a customer is more likely to be forgiving of a minor fox pause committed by a company that they like than an oops perpetuated by one that they feel no connection to. By developing a relationship with your customers, and earning their trust, they will move past customer service or product issues more easily, knowing that you will address their concerns and resolve their problems to the best of your ability. Two, relationships create an image. It's hard to feel warm and fuzzy about a faceless corporate entity. Thankfully, through fostering relationships, you can bring a human face to your organization one that customers can relate to and even come to love. Think about it. Why so many large companies rely on cute spoke creatures to represent their brands? It's because everyone loves a pudgy doughboy that giggles, a pair of hapless talking M&M candies, and an eloquent gecko. The adoration we have for these corporate faces are automatically transferred to the companies that they represent. If Snoopy is a trusted character, MetLife must also be a company we can have faith in, right? The people who represent your company have the same effect. And this is by no means limited to just the frontline customer service and salespeople. Fast companies beyond customer loyalty programs, seven ways to build lasting relationships, advises companies to make customer relationships a shared responsibility for your entire organization. After all, every person that your company deals with in a day in any capacity could be a potential customer. Three, relationships create great word of mouth. Sure, people are quick to spread the word when they are displeased with the company, but they are also eager to refer their friends and family members to a business they truly believe in. And people trust a word of mouth referral from their nearest and dearest. That's why it is important that you forge a relationship of trust and respect with every customer that comes through your doors. This could, excuse me, also apply to your relationships with other businesses as well. The Globe and Mail's 10 Ways to Build Rock Solid Relationships with Customers proposes that any friend of yours is the friend of mine approach, stating that creating strategic partnerships and alliances with other businesses can lead to both partners receiving valuable referrals. Scratching one another's spines creates an ideal symbiotic situation. Four, relationships create a top-notch team. While it's important to create positive relationships outside of your organization, excuse me, y'all, got a call. They forgot I was on live. While it's important to create positive relationships outside of your organization, It is also vital to nurture healthy and respectful relationships within your company by developing a strong working alliance with your employees and creating an atmosphere and culture conducive to developing a strong sense of teamwork. You will be able to increase morale, productivity, and job satisfaction. It will also better enable you to attract and maintain key talent. Using social media to develop a relationship with potential hires is one method employed by many successful large companies. There is, however, one caveat it will require patience. 
In an expert interview with Tony Restell on social recruiting, 